In this video, we're going to go through an example of a mock load beginning with logging in for the day as a petroleum driver. In the login screen, you're going to enter your driver ID and password. You'll hit next and you'll enter your password. System is retrieving your logs. And we're going to put our current duty status. In this example, we're going to go ahead and select the duty status of inspect. It's going to ask us for our current load information and what trailer we have and shipping info. In this example, we're currently hooked to trailer test. And as of right now, we have no shipping information, so we enter none. Those two fields are required. We're now going to see a confirmation page, which is going to confirm our current driver ID, our old status, what our new status would be, the regulation we're running under, the trailer, any shipping info, where we're at, and the remarks. Everything looks correct. We're going to hit accept. It's now going to bring us to the inspection page. We're going to hit new. The next screen gives us several options, pre-trip, inter-trip, post-trip, and DOT inspection. In this example, we're starting for the day, so we're going to do our pre-trip inspection. In this form, you're going to fill out the pre-trip inspection. You're going to start with entering your driver name, We're going to enter the trailer number we're hooked to. And then we're going to choose whether or not we have a defect or not. If everything is inspected well, find no defects. If you select yes for that option, it'll then give you further drop down menus to notify us of what error you found in, in the inspection process. Once done, hit done. This now brings you to the home screen of the PeopleNet tablet. When we logged in, the system will automatically look in our dispatch system for a load. If one is pre-planned, after we log in, we'll get an email to the messaging system telling us of the trip pre-planned, and shortly thereafter, the workflow button will light up. Now you see we've got a screen message stating that we have a new message. We'll click OK. This brings us to the inbox of the messaging system. This will just give you a summary of the work order you've been asked to complete. And if we click on it, we're going to see some small details. We're going to see things like the trip number, which is the order number, our driver ID, how many total stops, what the shipper is, and the final consignee. If you're driving down the road when you get this, you'll get the option to hit the play button down there in the bottom left, and it'll play throughout the speaker on the Samsung tablet device. Once I've read this and made any notes I would like to, I go ahead and delete it to keep this inbox cleaned up. Back at the home screen, you'll now notice that workflow is lit up. This is where all the trip messages will happen from. You can see this is our list of trips. Currently, we have only one assigned to us. If we had multiple trips, as in ones pre-planned out, you would also see them stacked within this uh, folder here. Once they're completed, they're gone. If they're not completed, they're still on the screen. You can see the order we just got an email notification about. It's telling us it's 424-777, and we're the test driver. We've got a retain runout time from 3 p.m. today to 4 p.m., and then a delivery time from 4 to 5. Those could be important times if you have a specific pickup time or delivery you need to make. It also denotes the rack and the customer. We're going to click on that to get more information. Now we're starting to get to the details of the stops within the workflow. We have two stops, as it said in the summary. We have a live load on the top, 
and a live unload on the bottom. This screen gives us a short summary of each stop, but in order to get the real details, you'll need to click on the stop. We're going to click on the live load at Magellan. So when we do this, we now have a full screen of just the loading information that we're being asked to do. We've got the pickup time, which is the retain run out, the stop miles, what the event is, what trailer we should have, any POs or reference numbers, any stop reference numbers, any order comments, all the way down to directions, address, phone number, and most importantly, the commodity we're being asked to pick up. For a gas load, this is asking us to pick up the Magellan Pipeline in Omaha, Nebraska. It's asking us to only grab one commodity. We're asked for a low sulfur number two clear, 7,500 gallons off of Heartland Fuels, and we've got a pen and Petrox number there below. There's also a reference number or description in this one stating that we're loading for wind transport. It's key to make any notes on this information for this stop uh, as you may need it when you arrive at the shipper. Now I'm going to go back and look at the summary for the live unload stop. This gives me the time of delivery for the stop here at Wynn Omaha. It gives me again any other reference numbers related to the order or any other notes. In this setting, the customer profile when transport has directions which have been noted in there. These are directions usually provided by another co-driver that we've input in the system over time. If you notice that these are incorrect, please let dispatch know and we'll get them updated. In this trip, it's telling us we're going to Wynn in Omaha and we're going to drop that diesel. There's no other notes in this session, but there are some directions that may be helpful to me getting around town. Now that I'm back at the workflow stop screen, I have several options at the bottom of the screen. I can view the entire route by hitting the route button and using the navigation. I can click start to actually start this trip. And if I had more trips or I want to go back one screen, I have the trips button. We're ready to start this load and go load at the pipeline. So I'm going to hit start. It brings you back to the home screen each time you hit that button. We're going to go back into the workflow. And now you'll see there's no longer a stop button, but yet the two stops. Each stop should automatically pick up your arrival and notify you of such when you're close. If it does not do it, you need to come in here and actually select the stop and hit arrive. Like I said, the system should pick up the location. If it does not, it will learn over time and start to move the location to where you show the actual arrival is. Since we're in a demo environment, the truck's not actually moving I have to hit arrive manually. I've arrived at Omaha Magellan. I'm going to select arrive. The next screen pre-populates on what I'm needing to answer as soon as I'm done loading. As you'll see, it pre-fills out most of the information. However, required information is highlighted in red, with a red asterisk to the left. You'll see the trailer number is the first required item. It prefills it with what the order Qualk said it should have. In this example, it was test. I do have test. I'm going to leave it test. You then scroll down and see that we were asked to load 7,500 to low sulfur number two using these pen codes. It's going to ask me for the gross net and bill of lading for that product. This example, I'm going to go ahead and say I got 7,501. I'm then going to go to the net and enter. 7502 and I'm going to enter a bill of lading as 1001. If there was a second bill of lading due to maybe a blended load, blended product, you then have another bill of lading spot under each commodity as you fill up. You can have up to five of these on a five compartment trailer, four in a four compartment, three in a three compartment. The dispatcher may be asking you. As you can see, the rest of the info is pre filled out. There's no additional info for you to fill out. You scroll to the bottom and you'll hit send. It's now going to ask you if you want to route to the next stop. This is a feature put in there using Copilot navigation. You can select yes, it'll begin to pull it up and route you here, uh, or you can say no if you know where you're going and you don't want to mess with it. I'm then going back into the workflow to go ahead and send my depart for that stop. 
you can see there's a depart button here. So it is important that you send the actual depart based on the time you're actually leaving. Be it you have all your paperwork, you're leaving the site, you want to go ahead and tell us you've departed. The pickup is now completed. I'm going to go back into the workflow and now you'll see that the only stop available is live on load. I can't scroll up or down, that's the only stop available. So I'm going to click on that stop and again same option, I have a route button which would route this particular stop based on where I'm at to where it is or I'm going to go ahead and show I arrived. So we've arrived for our delivery, we'll go ahead and hit arrive. At that point, a message is sent off to dispatch to notify them that you've arrived. If there's another trip pre-planned at that time, it'll automatically send it to your unit. This gives you time, or this, the system time, to go ahead and send you that new trip while you're unloading. If you do not end up getting one at that point, it is worth giving dispatch a call to request that next load. If there's not another load, we do need to go back into that stop and show we departed. And then shortly thereafter you'll see the workflow button gray back out as we've completed that trip. As it has now. I hope this video helps. If you have any questions, ask a fellow co-driver or ask managers for help.